Hello, 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 everyone. Hello. Good evening, good, e good evening, Jockey. Hello. How are you, everyone? Good to see you all. How are you, Jim? It's been forever. You're looking good. <laughs> Thank you, Rispat. Good to see you. It's uh, cold it's and nice. sunny. I don't know. I, I know it. <laughs> hectic we are suffering but we will survive thank you thank you guys yeah. for joining us hi everybody that is watching us out there thank you for joining us this is our sixth broadcast joking country very proud of ourselves <laughs> uh, so today we'll be talking about a very interesting topic we're talking about ip intellectual property uh, what rights to keep and what rights to give away beyond that i think we'll, we'll still be exploring in a more broader way in case you know we need to understand first of all where do you before you even know what right to keep and what to give away where do you start with the business right anyway you know we have an experts with us today that will help us unpack that let me do a very quick uh introduction of everybody but before i go to that i want to tell everybody that is watching us that has been for the last five weeks but you can catch repeats um, of all these broadcasts on our YouTube uh, page, which is Zeb Tribe TV. And also on this, on our Facebook page, we have all the broadcasts from the last five weeks available in case you want to go back and, you know, have a recap and learn a thing or two. Today, we're very excited. We're very excited because last week we all got very excited. You know, the internet of things was ablaze with conversations about rights and so many other things. Uh, but we want to learn. We, we, we are not here to chastise. We are not here to, you know, witch hunt. We just want to learn because, you know, IP is something that affects all creatives. Although we'll be focusing on filmmakers and filmmaking, we understand. And, and June will help us unpack that more. IP affects creatives in all spectras of, you know, creativity. So very quickly, let me uh, introduce our panelists today. We're very pleased to have Likarion Wenaina. Likarion is all things filmmaking. He will talk for himself, but briefly, I can just say he's a filmmaker, he's a, he's a director, he's a writer, he's a producer. Likarion, I'm not sure whether you've acted, but he will tell us about that. So basically, you're a filmmaker, you're a Kenyan filmmaker, and a brilliant one at that, one we really admire. So thank you for making the time to be with us today, Likarian. Um, Next, we have June, June Gashui. June is an IP and entertainment lawyer in Kenya. I think a lot of creatives in the industry have interacted with June one way or the other. Uh, because I think generally we can say you're an entertainer. I mean, you're a lawyer, but you're an entertainer as well. And, you know, in the issue of IP, I don't think there's anybody else better placed to guide us today and, you know, to tell us what we need to learn. Because a lot of us ignore this issue and then it comes to bite us later. Uh, we'll also be joined by um, Asif Karim. Uh, Asif is trying to get on and in a few minutes, there he is. Hello, Asif, how are you? Confirm if you can hear us. Thank you, thank you. I was actually, I was just about to do an introduction uh, of you. I just introduced Likarian, uh, who's a filmmaker in Kenya. Uh, June, the IP and entertainment lawyer. And there you are, Asif. For those who might not know Asif, Asif is many things. Asif, for people who might not know, is a former international cricketer. He represented Kenya in World Cup, I think, in the 90s. And I think he was a captain at some point for the Kenyan team. He also played pro tennis. I think he represented Kenya in the Davis Cup in the 80s. And in so many other competitions. So for those who do not know, let me he's a celebrity when it comes to sports. Second, Asif is the founder and the chair of Kenya International Sports um, Film Festival. I believe it's the first of its kind in Africa. And this year will be the third edition of KISF. So, you know, coming from a sporting background and then, you know, coming up with a sports festival, a sports film festival, because that is something that has not really been explored. So we really admire him for that. He's also uh, currently a director at Kenya Film Commission. So he's very close to 
what we are talking about. He is one of the directors at Kenya Film Commission. He understands filmmaking. He understands the things that affect filmmakers. And I think Asif is also a filmmaker in the making or at heart, to be honest. <laughs> he probably doesn't know it yet, but I think he's, he's, he's getting there as a producer. So, and, and then finally, Asif is also an arbitrator, a certified arbitrator. Uh, and so while we are talking about IP, at times things go wrong. Um, and at times we catch what has gone too late in the day, but what do we do? Where do we go from there? Because we have a very small industry. We have to coexist, whether we are happy or not. We still have to find a way of resolving the issues that affect us and finding a way forward. So we're very pleased to have Asif. Uh, sir, thank you for making the time to be with us. Finally, um, Njoki, my partner in crime, uh, thank you for always being here. Uh, and Njoki, take it away. Before Njoki take it, takes away, my name is Rispa Modami, for anybody you might not know. Uh, and, you know, Njoki is my partner in this. So Njoki, please take it away. Thank, thank you. you thank you for very good introductions. Thank you, Asif, you're finally with us. And um, this is amazing. Thank you, June, because you can't talk of entertainment law and IP in this region without talking about June Gashui. And Likarion, you are everything in film. You even lit the, the internet on fire recently. So a few things of here. We are actually looking at this discussion to share and educate ourselves and educate our audience out there. And even for those who are listening to us, it is not a bashing um, platform. It is not a blacklisting platform. It is a learning platform. Even when we laugh at ourselves, we will, we will. And the best way to learn is from those who've been tested. They've been there and it's practical. How many conferences and workshops have been run in Kenya on IP and copyright? Some of us can quote the chapters, the acts, verse by line by verse by chapter by paragraph, but it's a different thing in reality on the ground. That's why we have June, who knows the law in and out. That's why we have a seat. When things don't go so well, then what do you do? And you've already signed the dotted line. We are human beings. We still need to live in the same country, work in the same industry. And Likarion, you've been there, bruised. You, 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 you've laughed, you've smiled, you have cried, you are our case study. So we want to hear about that because we are human beings. Now, let me first thank the lots of people who've joined in. Jamaris is always the first one to check in. We even have people from Atlanta, Jane Courier from Atlanta. Thank you so much. And Betty, who is always there. Ingolo Wakena, that's brilliant from the, from the, those days at the university and so on. And many more are checking in. Thank you. Those who are on, please keep sending your comments and questions. Make it brief because it's easier to read a sentence or two rather than a paragraph and a chapter. Please make it brief. Now I'm going to ask the, our panelists very quickly because the one hour goes so fast, you wouldn't believe it, yeah? I'm going to ask June as the lawyer, what is IP? What is um, entertainment law. Very briefly, please tell us about it. Okay, thank you so much, Rispa and Joki, uh, for having me. Um, and I'm looking forward to a great discussion. So, very quickly, intellectual property is what we call IP in short, and it is a discipline within law that specializes in the creative works or the genius of the mind. So, it's basically intangible property versus tangible property that we see and feel and touch uh, on a regular basis. And it basically um, is a way of protecting the creations of our mind. So if you think of things like music and uh, books and plays and film and software, those are the types of things that work behind the scenes in terms of how they come into being, um, but they are usually not things that we can feel or touch. And so the law sees that this type of innovation and this type of creativity needs to be rewarded, not only from an uh, artistic and beautiful point of view, but also from a business and in, in an economic rights point of view. So that's in a nutshell what intellectual property is. 
Thank you very much, June. You've, you've used the term genius of the mind, but at times genius of the mind leads you to signing things where you kind of regret midway. So let's go to Asif. Asif, what is arbitration? And what exactly, first of all, with Asif, he's unique. Unique in that in Kenya, film, art, sports are always lumped together in one ministry. And here he is, alleged in sports, who's gone into film. So we can't have a better person to kind of give us this cocktail. And then what is arbitration, Asif? Tell us a little bit about what you do and what arbitration is all about. Oh, no, we can't hear him. Asif, you might be muted, no? No, you're not. I wonder why, we can't hear Asif. Okay, as if we can't hear you. So while we sort that out, let's go to Likarion and then we can sort you out uh, as if. Likarion, unmute yourself. Likarion, go ahead while we sort out as if. Likarion? Um, uh, talk about um, myself or talk about IP and what I know about it. Now, Likarion, you are a filmmaker. Yes. What leads you to saying, I want the experience, so I want to give up my rights. Uh, um, what is that balance? But first of all, tell us a little bit about what you have done. Some of the people don't know. Let's start from there. Who is Likarion? Yes. Uh, well, Likarion Wenena is a filmmaker from Nairobi, Kenya. Um, he has worked in various departments. I always like to joke that I've worked in almost every single department. I've worked as an actor, worked as a boom operator, worked as an art director, as an assistant director, all in all to just gain enough experience to be the filmmaker that I am. I have worked in um, TV. I've done directed shows like um, Antibos and uh, Vashita. Um, I've, I'm, I'm known for my short films. I've done a couple of short films. And most recently, I directed a feature film called Supermodel. That, in a nutshell, is uh, Likaro Manena. Okay. All right. Well, we're still trying to get um, Asif back. And Asif, anytime, speak to us so we see whether you're back. Um, Likarion, let me ask a question, which will be answered between Likarion and June for now. You want to grow a career. Oh, have we lost Jackie? No, I'm, I'm there. Can you there hear you me? Are. Okay, can yes. you hear me? You had frozen for a bit. Yeah, oh, thank you. Okay. Welcome back. All right, then. Okay, and I'm wondering whether we have a Asif back. Asif, can you hear us? Oh, no, no we still can't hear you. Asif, we still can't hear you. We can't hear you. So, Likarion, so you want to get good experience. And, and these are two scenarios. June, I want your opinion, and later Asif will give us his opinion. You want to develop your CV. And here I know as a consultant, the attempt you've taken very little money or even do work for free to invest for a better job later on. So if you sign up, it's your own genius of mind, to use June's term, <laughs> and, but midway, the, the, the job gets so big, bigger than you, but it's related to you, but you're not benefiting. What should one do? What should one do? First of all, Ikarion, what would lead you to deciding this one I keep it to myself, this one I give away? Please get us into your mind. Yeah. So I think what would lead me to make a decision like that, like selling, selling away all the IP rights, would be the chance to make um, a big budget film. Um, up until that time, I had a story for like three, four years. Uh, in fact, I tried pitching it to different producers. No one would take it. No one would even dare touch um, a superhero film, in their, in their words. And so this opportunity comes where you have the presentation to get your movie made finally, and not just made to be made well, made with good quality, made for an international audience as well. And I look around and I have no other option in my in the seat that I was sitting on. There, no one put a, a, a gun to my head. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't forced or asked to it. Uh, in fact, I was given a month 
to go think about it because it's it's not an easy decision to make. Yeah. And it only took me two weeks to decide to do that because yeah. I looked around, I looked at the structure, I looked at the system around, and I was like, there's no opportunity for me to make the movie that I want to make. At the ah. time, there was no legal, there was no local film fund. There was no structure in place that I can apply and you know get my script forward. This was the one opportunity that I had. And I looked back at all the other films being made, like Nairobi Half-Life. I wanted another Nairobi Half-Life. Mm-hmm. I know it's called show business, but show comes first for me. <laughs> and I may have been a bad businessman, but I really wanted the show. I really wanted to make something and finally have my first feature film. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why I ended up signing all the rights, knowing full well what was going to happen um, forward. So I so- blame no one for doing Okay, before June comes in, I have a question for you, Likarin. You know, in this show, we are very bold and genuine, and we um like not making no apologies. Tell me, without supermodel, would you do you think you would have traveled the far you went and won so many awards and became a, a great, became a well known um filmmaker? Are there benefits that you got that there's no way, even what else was existing, you could have managed to have Supermondo? Of course. Um, what Supermondo did is, um, yes, I had a career before that. Uh, but the career I had was I was known for short films. Yes, yeah. I did travel with the same short films. I got to go to Cannes Film Festival with my short film. I got to go to AMVCA um, several times. Uh, but what Supermondo did was, to introduce me to new markets, markets yes. that I'd never touched before. Yes. And I, I traveled to almost every single continent and, yes. and got so much experience and so much, um, so many contacts and so many networks and yes. learned a lot about the systems put in place and learned about more about even our systems and what can change. Mm-hmm. And um, yes. so it was a really, really wonderful experience, um, mm-hmm. an experience that I cherish for the rest of, for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. And it made Maker, I am. I am. I, I am not a filmmaker without supermodel, and I cannot think of a life before a model. Mm-hmm. I cannot, and so okay. I have no regrets from the experience mm-hmm. I went through. Yeah. Okay. All right then. Let's ask um uh, June. I'm gonna bring you back here before I go to uh, as if we's back. Yeah. So, yes, we can now. We can now. We can now. As if just a moment. I'll bring June back so that we can follow up with this part B of my question. June, yes, he wanted to be out there, big budget film, and he got it, and he traveled okay. out there, and there wasn't a week that we didn't see Likarion receiving one prize or another, yeah? So where do you cover yes. that in IP? Where is it covered in the IP? Yeah. So I think I, I want to start off by saying that uh, in intellectual property, my, my thing has always been there's no right or wrong. There is what you can what you can live with, okay? Mm-hmm. Everything, especially when you think about the business side of things, there's mm-hmm. legal provisions that give you certain rights depending on what role you played. Um, and and I, I talk a lot about music because that's one of my um, artistic expressions. And I liken making a movie, especially a feature film like uh, what Licarion made, to signing with a record label. You know, they have the the infrastructure, they have the budget, and you have this burning desire to see your project come to life. You Mm -hmm. start off with the rights, the copyright rights in your script, in your story. Those are Mm -hmm. yours intrinsically, and there are laws that protect that and give you those rights. However, the business decision then becomes, if Mm -hmm. I was to save up, and make my album or make my film, it might take me 10, 15, 20 years, but the story is here now and it's burning now. And therefore that's the, that's the discussion that usually happens. Even when we are giving legal guidance and counsel to clients, these are, we just ask them to think about these questions. We cannot make the decision for our clients. It's to highlight, here are all the things you should consider as you make this decision. And then, of course, use our expertise to maybe negotiate for better terms, you know, better money, better conditions, see if there's a possibility of sharing some of the rights. Um, And I think one of the things that um, this entire conversation has made me think about is 
that we plan, we don't plan for the success in as much as it is the thing that drives the, crea the creation of the thing mm. in our wildest dreams. In my head, I keep saying, I'm going to win a Grammy. I'm going to win an Oscar. It's already in my head. So whenever mm. I'm creating, that's mm. the end goal. And then if a contract is put before me, those mm. are some of the things I say, let's even just hypothetically say, this mm. becomes a hit. What mm. terms and conditions can we negotiate now? Even if yeah. it never happens, can we have that in a document? So I think Likari used the right word. It's balancing the interests, the dream, the desire versus what your economic pocket and, and budget can actually achieve for you. Yeah. So June, what you're saying is that we really need to first think ahead long term, you know, what can I live with and how am I balancing this? But there are times when, while we thought we thought things so well, the project takes a different trajectory. And I like what you're saying, not planning for success, because there are two scenarios. You could get into a project and you sign off all your rights and the, the project is a disaster. And then you say, yippee, mm -hmm. at least I walk away with my salary, you know? The opposite <laughs> just And you know how it is in the film industry. As something little, a small movie could go and be a big success and you make a lot of money. You can predict. So it could be a flop. So you say, thank God I got paid. You know, it could also be a big success and you're thinking, oh no, it's making so much money. Where's my share? So I see. Tell us what is arbitration and how would arbitration come in if midway you're having second thoughts? Asif? Asif, can you hear us now? We've lost him again? Oh no, I thought we had him. I think we've lost him. Asif, no, can I you? I can't hear you very yes. clearly. Okay, please answer our question. What would happen yeah. if midway... Can you hear me? Yes, we can. We can hear you. We can hear you. Can you hear us? Uh, breaking a little bit. Not clearly. Can you hear me clearly? Yes. Yes. Tell us about arbitration. Can you hear me clearly? Yes. Okay. We can hear you, Asif. Okay, let's go back to June. What would one do if midway things change and you want to change the conditions? Well, um, I'll, I'll give you two scenarios. One where the contract that you signed had a provision for amendments and, and uh, changes in, in things that could happen from the side of either party, uh, because it could even be that the, the person who's funding the film has a problem. Look at what's happened now with COVID. A lot of uh, projects that were being funded, have everyone has pulled back and said, the timeline now needs to change. So the reality is in life, things happen and things could change. So a, a prudent provision would be to provide for uh, the ability for amendments, uh, mutually agreed upon amendments by the parties uh, so that you can revisit conversations. However, the second angle of that is assuming that clause does not exist uh, or even if it exists and the things you want to renegotiate are actually not practical um, in the sense that, let's take film, for example, for, for a producer to make the investment, they would need to acquire all the rights. It's called chain of title. You need to be able to grab all the rights so that you can go and tell your donors, your funders, your distributors, I hold this entire thing. And nobody is then going to come and say, no, 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 remove this element of the film before you then show it at this festival. Mm -hmm. Producers require that comfort. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if that is one of the things that will be subject of the discussion uh, in mm -hmm. terms of amending a contract, that would be problematic. Mm -hmm. uh, but the final uh, component would be that provision does not exist. And therefore, mm -hmm. um, you have the possibility for, let's call it, a, a dis let's say a, a dispute has arisen. And then mm -hmm. you would provide for alternative dispute resolution, which is what, you know, Asif is, is a genius at. Mm -hmm. um, and being able, it, that basically says, we recognize something is not quite perfect in our marriage or in our relationship. And we require some independent, objective 
person to come and hear both sides of the party and see if we can um, remedy the situation so that the project can continue. That would be that would be the the, the opportunity that's available. Um, however, as I say, I have seen some really good and some really bad contracts that don't even make that provision at all. So I think, as we said at the beginning, this is a learning platform so that there are some things we look out for so that mm -hmm. the next time we're in, in certain uh, scenarios, we we are it it triggers something in our mind to ask yeah. some some certain questions. Okay. So so if uh, June, if I could ask. Um, when you've signed and midstream you feel you need to change something is there something mm -hmm. us as artists should make sure that it's incorporated in that legal document to provide us that legal room that should things change we can go back to rethink or is it automatic that even with a very tight contract where you have tied yourself and given everything, your body, your soul and everything, but you realize you can actually come back? Do we have to have a close for a comeback? So I'll, I'll, I'll sort of pull from what I had said earlier. In some scenarios, that is possible. Um, and in others, it, it simply isn't. Um, take an example where you have um, triggered several other relationships mm -hmm. just off of the strength of a signed contract. Yeah. Then you, are, you would expose one of the parties to breach or uh, mm -hmm. the other contracts that they have then signed, uh, if you mm -hmm. understand what I mean. So th there are several things to, to, to consider. And so I can't give you a yes or no answer, unfortunately. I think the, the ability to have conversations is something that we advise should always be the case, whether there's an airtight contract or not. People are, you know, making a movie is not a one day affair. It's, it's months and years of, of, of interacting with, with the two parties or the three parties or whatever it is. And therefore by default, constant communication is the, the name of the game. And therefore in those con uh, instances, there are, there are times you can say, I would like to re rehash this particular issue. Is it possible? Can we add an addendum to this agreement because something has changed? Every time there's rain and we lose two shoot days, there's a new uh, schedule that there's a new schedule that comes out. That's an amendment to a contract that said we will finish shooting on the 17th of June and today is the 18th. So mm -hmm. amendments are a thing that happen in all uh, relationships. The, the the issue is to for us artists to know that we should ask when a contract is put before us. Um, what what does this mean? What's the extent? What items can I raise, say, six mm -hmm. months into this relationship that mm -hmm. can warrant a discussion and a conversation between the, the parties? Okay. I hope I've, I've answered yeah. you, Jackie. So we have to be proactive, think ahead, you know? What could come up that... So we are saying that don't go blank when you're going to sign this document. First, like we say here in Nairobi, Jita Mukutano, call yourself for a meeting and ask yourself, what do I want and what don't I want? Ask yourself, have a list of what if, maybe 10 what ifs before you go to this. Rispa, I'm going to ask you to ask Asif his question, just in case he can hear you better than me, yeah? Mm -hmm. I'll bring him back on. Yeah, let's see where we can get him, yeah. Asif, can you hear uh, us? Yeah, can you hear me? And clearly, very loud and clear. Okay. Let me, uh, I have understood what you've been trying. First of all, my apology uh, for, for this mix-up that's happening. Uh, I guess it's the new technology that we're all trying to embrace. But first and foremost, I want to uh, congratulate Joki and Rispa for what I think is a very great initiative uh, for what I call the uh, a 101 uh, for movie makers, uh, for filmmakers, for film lovers, for creative people to understand how the industry works. We have discussed on many subjects over the last few weeks, and I think this one is a very critical subject that needs to be discussed. So if you allow me two or three minutes to speak so that I can give you a background on, on yeah. arbitration and mediation. Now, uh, the Kenyan constitution uh, in 2010, especially chapter 10, if you look at the judiciary, it's on judiciary. And article 159 specifically talks about ADR. ADR is Alternate Dispute Resolution. 
And one of the areas that most of us have been brought up, our generation, is that when you have a dispute, the first recourse we think of is the court, is to go to your lawyer and you end up being in court. So it's a lot of mindset that needs to change that there are many alternative ways to resolve a dispute. And, and I compliment the Kenyan government and the Kenyan public for supporting ADR because I think that is the way forward. I think June will agree during her study in the union for legal. ADR was just kind of a chapter. Nowadays, it's a module in the university where they discuss what ADR is all about. And there are different forms of ADR uh, in the market. There is what you call negotiations, there is mediation, there is arbitration. Uh, and, and those are the best avenues for any disputes. To now, let me just look a, a little bit of difference for everybody to understand three major areas of alternate dispute resolution. Negotiations is something where the two parties who are in dispute will sit across the table and see how they can agree on any disagreements they have had. Mediation is where you have a professional mediator coming in who is facilitating, who is guiding, who is helping to for the decision. The mediator is purely a facilitator, but it's a very professional field. Uh, and so one needs to be trained to be a good and an effective mediator. Then comes arbitration, which is similar to a judge, where two parties present their disputes to the arbitrator, of course with evidence, and the arbitrator listens to the whole thing and that makes his decision, which is more or less final and binding uh, so that you could move forward. Now there are two types of uh, ways to handle this. I think there was one thing you, where you mentioned that if you're already in an agreement where ADR was not discussed and you are in a dispute, what do you do? If you go to court and you know the systems that we have, uh, no, I, I think it's not a Kenya problem, it's a global problem where courts are always behind by 10 years uh, <laughs> to the minimum. Uh, I'm sure June will agree yeah. with this. Yes, the way behind. Yes. And now with COVID, it has yes. taken us further back. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's important for the parties who are in dispute yes. to come and agree that yes, we have no mechanisms of discussing our dispute and that's why we have gone to court. Yes. So the best thing would be to create an ad hoc agreement where you agree that we will resolve our dispute either in form of mediation, well, negotiation between the parties. If that fails, then you go into mediation. And if that fails, then we go to arbitration. arbitration. Now, yes. fortunately, yes. we have a very strong Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in Kenya. I'm a very proud member of it. It's a branch of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in UK, which is over 100 years old. We have fantastic arbitrators in the market. We have great mediators in the market. And that institution has been very successful over the last, I think it was formed in 1984 in Kenya. And over the years, I think right now we have about 60 plus fellows. I mean, that's high. And the chartered was even higher. I think we have about 25 to 30 of them. So we have a good expertise in this country to, to handle uh, arbitration. And of course, we have enough mediators uh, also. The second form is that now that people are getting into new agreements and the awareness has increased, it would, in my view, it would be a crime. I'm using the word a crime if you do not include an ADR in your agreement of whatsoever. Yes. In my view, it should be mandatory for any agreement to be executed. And this is where the lawyers come in and yeah. they need yeah. to embrace it. I'm, I'm sorry. But a lot of lawyers are still reluctant yes. on ADR. Uh, yeah. I, I, I stand to be corrected on that, June. But a lot of lawyers <laughs> are not very comfortable with ADR as yet. However, when you speak to the younger generation, they are embracing it very well. And I think it's time now that we need to change our mindset of how we need to spend less time on dispute resolution 
and spend more time in creative, which, which most people are experts in, and those disputes drain the, the creative people, and we cannot afford that. So yeah. that's a little yeah. brief yeah. on, on uh, well, alternate dispute resolution. I'll excellent. keep it open excellent. if there's any comments or questions. Yes. yes. Excellent. That's excellent. Me. That's me. You know, I feel you like. Know, I feel like. Oh no! Why am I having a? Why am I having a? Rispa, take Rispa. over. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. As, as Njoki tries to figure out why she's having an echo, I think there's another, another device that probably is on. Thank you very much for, you know, unpacking that for us because a lot of times we don't know what options exist for us. And I think, June, what you said, and I think it tallies with what Asif is saying is that at the point, first of all, for filmmakers and creatives in general, I think we need to understand what rights and we need to educate ourselves because how I see it in, you know, Lekarian, we're going to use you as a case study today. As a producer, <laughs> as a producer, you go for, like June said, rightfully said, you go for most rights because it enables you to market your content. That's what you use to distribute your content. So you want it picked by distributors and they want to know that all these rights are available for them. I think as a creative, it is your uh, prerogative and as a producer, also, if it's your work dealing with with uh, distributors, to know what your rights are and what your limitations are. So, at times when it comes to creative work, for example, you find that produ uh, right, the producers want to take all the rights to do with the movie itself, the markets, you know, VOD, the platforms, TV, you know, theater, and all that. But as a writer, you have radio rights, you have uh, stage rights that you need to know so why are you giving all this you need to educate yourself on those things so that's what i'm learning from we we have to educate ourselves and asif and june you rightly say that you know there's always an option in the contract right at the beginning where you know should my film become successful like Arion, can we come back to the drawing table <laughs> and have a discussion about it so like Arion, going back to you you know, like you said, and, and we really admire you and, and you know that tenacity, because a lot of us don't even have it, we do not have the courage to do what you did, is that you say you do not regret the decisions that you made. But is there a part of you, you know, when you, based on what you wrote um, on Facebook, is there a part of you, maybe when you're doing the festivals and all that, that you wished there was an opportunity for you to renegotiate um, did, did that ever cross your mind? And what would you different, do differently going forward? You're still writing, you're still creating. So what would you do differently? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, uh, first and foremost, uh, I think the, 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 the time that really hit me that um, not having any IP rights towards your product was when I'm doing the, the festivals, yeah? The issue here for me was never about the the revenue share, yeah, um, because of the part of the project I was doing. All of that was explained, um, and of of course, going to the festivals was expensive, and I had to sort myself out. But I went willingly because I really needed to market my film. But once you get to the festival, you realize that you can't really make any impact or make any major decisions with your film if you do not own any part of the rights. You know, where the, you get a, a good offer, you really want to take it, but you have to tell the person to go to someone else. You you find an avenue, a, a, a new contact, a new network. You cannot make any decision whatsoever um, if you do not have at least part of the rights. And that really hit me hard because then what was the point of going to the festivals? It really got really, you know, then the festivals became about my next film, never about celebrating the film that I have and the decisions that I can make with the film that I have right now. So then all the conversations that we talk was about, oh, in a few years, I'll probably write another movie. Hopefully we can have a conversation. Maybe if your offer is still there, I can maybe take it then. But for now, I cannot make any decisions for the film I have right now. And going forward, um, um, I would definitely now have learned about the ADR. That was something that was new to me as much as I did research. Uh, that was a new, new element and I appreciate that. That is definitely something I'm gonna insist on. Um, when, when before we made Supermodel, we would have never, ever thought it would be this big, ever in our wildest dreams, for both the producer and for me. We were just making a film, an honest film for myself and for my country. 
We never knew we were going to go and do 78 awards and, and do several, almost every single continent and theatrical releases and DVD sales. And it became too much. So I think it also caught both of us out of, <laughs> um, um, out of yeah. off guard, both of all of us um, involved. Mm -hmm. And so moving on in future project, projects, I'm definitely going to fight for more um, control of the IP rights and not just the IP rights, even the copyright, you know, um, decisions of remix and adaptations, mm -hmm. you know, um, maybe even uh, be part of the producers, you know, maybe part of the contract can say that, that I reserve the right to, to comment on the distribution of the film. If it goes to somewhere I do not agree with my own principles, I'd like that. So definitely I've learned a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, the artist in me, um, unfortunately, if put in the same situation, <laughs> will not say no, because I, I still want to be my art. Only yeah. that now with the information I have, I mm. will try and negotiate better. Yeah. I will yeah. try and add more clauses in it. Mm -hmm. um, but I will forever make the decision for the artist. And that's what you yeah. said, you know, you cannot yeah. ignore the art uh, yes. above all. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can I, can I interject? I just I wanted to add yeah. something because I, there's a, there's a point he's made that I think is, is, uh, is, is really important. Um, and it's about roles, uh, the roles that you play. And jo Rispa alluded to it when she started talking about even understanding the kind of rights that you have, you know, there are remake rights, there are rights for adaptations because the thing that was created first was a story by Lecarion in this particular case. And it always starts with a story, whether it's in the form of a book or in the form of a script that then becomes a screenplay. That's another piece of work because it could be written by somebody else. That's another piece of IP work. And then that screenplay then is, is transformed into an audiovisual work, which is the movie. And the process of doing that requires actors, requires directors, requires technical expertise. And I think one of the things I wanted to highlight was based on the roles that you play. And I put an S on that because Likarion started by introducing himself as one who has played a, a myriad of roles in this particular space. You could be the writer, you could also be the director, you could even be the producer as well. But remember to negotiate for each of those roles separately. Even though it's one individual, you're playing three or four different roles. And, and similarly, the negotiation then cannot be a one holistic uh, sort of approach. Um, the other small comment I wanted to make was, um, I, I agree with, with you, uh, Asif. I, I'm very young. I know I look, uh, but I'm very young. I just finished school the other day. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you're right, you're right. The, the, I, I think ADR was just something we were, it was a, a, a principle that we were taught about, but the actual implementation of it has come much later. And I wanted to say that even the courts now, the one change that is positive is that even when uh, lawsuits have been filed, judges are now asking, have you done your absolute best to have resolved this matter out of court? Because they have such a huge backlog. So mm -hmm. most times you could even be sent back for what is called court-appointed mediation. Mm -hmm. So uh, just to add that they are starting to, it's to relieve themselves of a lot of work, but they are starting to appreciate that this ADR thing is actually it's beneficial for parties to just sit and try and resolve it. And it costs much, much less. Yeah. Actually, yeah. You, before Can I add something? Yes, Can go I ahead. Something? Yeah, uh, in fact, what you just said is, um, uh, it's a very welcome thing that has happened by the judiciary, where we have the court appointed mediators, you know, where the judges are sending uh, uh, cases to mediators. And the success rate, I must tell you, is over 80%. Now, more than the success, the time that it finishes, the dispute that has been lingering for years, remember when a dispute is in court, you are talking about thousands and millions of shillings being blocked for whatever reason, whether the party is right or wrong, the money is frozen because you are in a dispute. So the earlier you resolve it with, with mediation or arbitration, which is a much faster process, uh, it's better for everybody. The money circulates in the system. You are more focused as uh, creative people to focus on what you're good at instead of spending a lot of anxiety times with court and disputes. Yeah. So yes, we now have 
I think over 200 uh, mediators appointed in this country by the judiciary. So the numbers are growing, the cases are getting successful, uh, and, I'm, and this is a snowball effect. In the next four to five years, you will see mediation and arbitration being the order of the day for any form of dispute resolution. Um, interesting, Asif, because, and also for June, because actually, by the way, I'm also a certified mediator. And I've also worn my other hat as a consultancy for the court annex on mediation. So I've seen the, the joys and the pains and the challenges. And one of the biggest challenges, the blockage for use of mediation, <laughs> June, has actually been lawyers because lawyers are seeing their source of income going through the window, yeah? And then the clever ones, what they are doing is standing themselves to be mediators. I don't see how a lawyer will also be a mediator. June, can you please comment on that and support your tribe that is called the lawyers? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, we, we, that's why we take up uh, interests and specializations. Yes. in different aspects of, of legal practice. So I, I always say to, to the clients out there who are creative entrepreneurs, there's a reason why we specialized um, in this particular area because we understand it's not like uh, a contract for a piece of uh, a transaction on, on land or, or some conveyancing transaction or a merger and acquisitions uh, transaction. So I, my, my answer is yes, it's true. It affects the, the, the lawyer's pocket. But at the end of the day, our, our obligation as lawyers is in the best interest of our clients. And if we're really, really um, ethical about the work that we do, and, and those of us who are within this entertainment and intellectual uh, law, uh, intellectual property law space, genuinely, not the ones who just say they are, genuinely, those of us who are, get the bigger picture, understand the, the, the artist's heart um, and the need for this kind of works to then transition from just being a beautiful idea to something that can. And even as somebody who's been in this space, my firm turns 10 next, next week. And I, I keep saying that with a lot of pride because I do nothing else, which means the creative entrepreneurs in this country are who have been responsible for my business surviving. So have I seen an increase in people recognizing, number one, that they have a right, and number two, taking that next step to educate themselves and invest in a lawyer like myself who has this area of specialization, which then allows them to see Im improvement in their, in their business and in their art form. So I think to answer you, the answer is yes, but I would urge that we, we, we look for the right lawyers then in, yes. to, to give that guidance, yeah. The right lawyers. What about one comment I'm reading here, that we have very good laws on the books, and what we don't need is another layer of the so-called arbitrators and mediators. If someone is messing with your legal IP, go to court. What does that tell us about us in the industry? Please, let's talk about that. I didn't make that up. I've read it word for word. <laughs> well, I, I, am, uh, I, am, I am perplexed to, to hear that because I think uh, the industry needs to wake up. The industry needs to rethink. They need to have a different mindset because, as I said earlier, when you go to court, you are spending a lot of valuable time in resolving a dispute that could have had other easier means to resolve. And as I keep saying, you need to spend more time in what you're good at, which is being creative in your work, yeah. not spending time uh, with the lawyers and with the, with the court. Uh, yeah. And so I think it's a complete mind shift that needs to take place. And I think it needs one more generation uh, <laughs> to really embrace uh, ADR. Yeah. And I'm saying yeah. it all due respect to everybody. Yeah. It is true. I think just to add, Asif can also confirm, I'm sure, that the, the Arbitrators Institute is also trying to look for arbitrators who have expertise in certain uh, fields. 
So yes. you, you, if you have a, a, a construction issue, you're not going to go and look for somebody who has no background or understanding in yes. construction. So maybe to give that individual comfort, um, remember that it's balancing how much money you have. Going to court costs a lot more money than sitting down with an arbitrator or mediator to, to resolve this in a different way. And what the Institute is doing is to look for arbitrators who have that expertise so that at least you're talking to somebody who who has an inkling of what it is that you're going through. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That, that, I agree with what you said, but there is a small rider on that. Most of the times you get an expert handling a particular dispute. But however, there are times you may not get, depending on the field that you are in, then you can always get an expert witness or an expert opinion to help the arbitrator in, in areas that he is not very conversant. So that is an added support. Because you, if you completely say that unless you have an expertise in that particular field, we will not do arbitration, then all that also defeats the purpose. So there mm -hmm. are experts in the market that are called in by the tribunal or by the parties to strengthen whatever they want to say to make the decision for the arbitrator in a much informed way. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Jockey, before you continue, uh, let me highlight a few comments uh, that have come through that I think are quite interesting. Mike Strano um, has raised an issue to do with ethics. And he says, you know, even music record labels, at times they keep the master rights and they allow the talent to retain some rights. So I think what that is alluding to is um, as a producer or maybe at times even a dis distributor, there are rights that you probably know that you need to inform the creator of or you need to look out for on their behalf. But at times because of business that uh, June talks about, we don't do it because as a producer, you're looking for, you, you're, you, you want to take everything if you can. Um, and you're looking out for yourself. So in line with that, you know, I would like to hear what June has to say with that. But I think from my opinion is that at the end of the day, it goes back to you as a creator of your content. Are you well informed? And to me, you is saying the pro uh, court process is so long and difficult, as Asif says, the best thing to do is to thrash out things right at the beginning instead of shouting when the horse has already bolted. Because if you didn't know what your rights are, uh, yeah. you didn't bother to read the producer is looking out for themselves. Uh, Damaris is saying, are our producers at a mature level to accept all that is being talked about today? Most times if you question a contract, you are labeled difficult and skipped for the next, next artist. Uh, so before I read more comments, please let's, let's address some of those. You are well because you are a producer, so. <laughs> yeah. So, so Deborah's comes with a script and she's talking about you know <laughs> she writes that she wants. And I'll read something else that uh, uh, uh Wilfred Kiyomi has also commented, and I think it's a very valid point going to uh, you know in what June was saying. If Damaris comes to you or Likarion comes to you as a producer, are you willing to listen or will you just say she's difficult and then you'll go for the next available writer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And okay. and I think I can expand on that question, Rispa. Um, yeah. most, most creatives say why they get themselves into this rut is they get a contract. They know now they must read the contract. They are not just signing. They see one or two things they're uncomfortable with, and they are like, well, if I raise hell about this, I'll be told to go to hell, literally, and they take somebody else. Where do we balance this desperado attitude with actually your own rights? Yeah. Who okay. wants to? Have Thank you. <laughs> I, I'll address. I'll address the one risk for uh, um, sort of short my way, um, and I think yes. So there's there's the. It's a question about whether or, or whose responsibility is it to say. Um, I'll take these and I'll give you back these, right? And, and, and I think you, you sort of answered it by saying the creative or the artist also needs to know what they have. Um, it, I think it's, it's putting maybe an, an undue burden on the record label or the producer to then say, uh, oh, okay, so I'll, did you know you have this right, okay? And I think mm -hmm. that is, is, is great if they're able to do it. People run 
training sessions all the time, especially for those who are doing like, I guess it's like TV shows where you're with your people for a long sort of two, three, four seasons down the road. So I always say a better informed partner is better in the long run so that you don't have flare ups, you know, uh, at the mm. end of a, of a long term project that mm. could then jeopardize yeah. the success. So being transparent and putting all your, your cards on the table is always the best way to go. However, mm -hmm. having said that, when, when you go into one of these relationships, and, and film is so much more complicated to an extent because the thing, we call them options, right? So you're giving me an option to exercise the use of your story for a period of time to make a movie, let's say. The, the story is still there. So if I decide I want to do an animation, the owner of the story is still the owner of the story. The film yeah. became a new work. So mm -hmm. all, you, all you've given technically is the rights in the movie, right? Mm -hmm. Which is a new copyright work separate from the original story, if it was a script or in a book. So I think that is fundamental for a lot of these conversations because I mean, the, the, one of the biggest examples we've seen is um, is the franchise for for uh, what is the kid who was the scientist magician, Harry Potter, right? The book mm -hmm. still be belongs to to the author. It yes. it's still her story, right? So, and if the production company had said, "Give me this option for two years," and never made the movie because they took way more than two years, then mm -hmm. she was getting her payment for just the option. The movie didn't even exist yet. So there's another stream of revenue that people need to, to remember that you can exercise. Um, and so appreciating what you have and what you can do later mm -hmm. on is, is really important. And, and I want to tie it very briefly to what um, Likarion explained when we spoke about when he spoke about the festivals. And you see that, that if you even look at our movie cinemas here, the movies that we're, they're negotiating for and we watch in the month of June, they, they knew we were coming out two years ago. It wasn't something that they found out about in May. So it tells you that within the film space, there is a calendar that is unlike any other industry. So you can't be planning for tomorrow. So I think mm -hmm. the ability to even be at a festival and congratulations for, for taking the, you know, the hit and going, Likarion, because you, you, it was a networking opportunity. And again, you are marketing yourself in various capacities. The, mm. the maker of, of a film, yes, uh, the director of a film, but also the writer of a damn good story. So mm. either way, you, if you realize that you have those three things at your, at, in, your, in, your, in the palm of your hand, then it, I think it changes the way you approach some of these opportunities. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, June, June. Let me talk about. Uh, before before uh, we conclude, uh, June, a uh, quick question in line with uh, Lucarion's. Uh, um, it's time to get an echo. Go on, there is yeah. you're having an echo, but go on. For example, based on what you've said, if Lucarion wanted to do a sequel of Supermodo, who has the rights? Does he have, if, if he wanted to do a sequel of it? Who has the rights? Does he have the rights? If you wanted to do stage or you wanted to do something else with it. Um, but you see, it's, okay, so just to be clear, it can't be a sequel because the rights in, that's what I was saying, it can be, his, his play was called, what was that, the original title of your play? Of the story? The he? Uh, unmute yourself. Italian, unmute. Unmute, unmute. Unmute. Um, it's called Hero Origins. So he can do whatever he wants with hero origins because that is what he brought to the table. So think of it like making a, baking a cake, right? So I come with the flour, he, ca he came with the eggs, uh, and, and the, the director came with the, the sugar, uh, the oven is the producers, right? So at the end of the day, when, when you look at Supermodo, it's a cake. All, all you're discussing now is a slice of the cake. What I'm saying is his bag of sugar is still his. And he can decide if to make a new cake, right? Yeah. With I, sorry, I, I like using like simple examples even for yeah. my own it's understanding. Perfect. But he, the yeah. the bag of sugar is still the carrions, right? So, mm -hmm. and I don't know about his particular scenario with with Supermodo, but the, the idea is if you are the producer and you make a movie that has the potential for sequel two, three, four, I would think they would want to hold on to those rights. 
But if I was a really good lawyer, I'd say, okay, but let's say it's super successful and you've invested. Can I then even negotiate two or three percent for my for my client? Since he's given you something that became such a good thing, yes. that that's what I would try and implement. So that, but the mm-hmm. sequel right would still be theirs. But the mm-hmm. bag of sugar and what else it could make mm-hmm. is it would remain with the with the creator of the story. Mm-hmm. Brilliant, uh, Likarian. Um, I just wanted to answer Damaris's um, uh, comment about our producers mature enough. And that was the attitude I had before this experience. I was like, oh, I, I, need, I need the job. You know, I'm not going to complain about the contract until, you know, one or two things happened. And this contract affected even, you know, the payment I received and, and what and what. And after the experience I went through, I, I got myself a lawyer. And there's no... I, I always say my lawyer would slap me if I signed a contract without her reading it. She would literally do it. And since then, um, to be honest, I get a peace of mind. Even though I'm, even though I will be labeled a, dis- a difficult director, I would rather question and have a very peaceful sleep in my own house rather than always signing and then complaining throughout. And and you, you know, we are at, we are very emotional with everything that we do. Mm-hmm. And so. Um, since then, and I haven't had any problems with any producer that I present to. You know, you give me a contract, don't tell me to sign now. I so forward it to my uh, the, my my lawyer, and we discuss. And there are contracts where I plainly say, nope. Um, if you cannot change this, I'm not comfortable with that. And we will move on, and they will call me for another one and say, oh, we found another project that fits what you had required. And I think you will never know until you do it. And I assure, I assure you, Damaris, you will have better sleep if you yeah. protect yourself. Okay. So, so the Thank question you. here is, the fear of being seen to be difficult now or leading a very difficult life later? It's a personal decision. We can't blame others for the lack of toughness that we didn't, we didn't um, what do you say, put into practice at the beginning. I see if you want to say something. Yeah, I just want to just add a little bit on what Likarian has said. And I'm so happy to hear that he's taken it to a new level uh, so that he can minimize the disputes, if any, down the road. And I'm hoping that uh, the lawyer is supporting ADR because that's a clause that I think you need to inculcate uh, for your own own betterness so that you can avoid uh, long cases, number one. Number two, you also discussed, the team was discussing right now about a lot of clauses are being discussed at the time of doing the negotiations or the agreement. And you decide, I don't want this, I want this, I don't want that. That's all fine, great. But remember, it's never going to be 100% foolproof. You, a lot of uncertain things will come up that you had neither party had thought of. And then you end up in a dispute or a disagreement. And that is why it's paramount to look at an ADR clause to avoid going to court so that you, and as you rightly said, uh, creative people are not emotional. They are very emotional. (laughs) So so they need to be nurtured. They need to be nurtured very delicately. I have dealt with a few now that I'm in the industry and I'm planning a few things. So they I, are think, no, I think he's referring to me and Rispa. <laughs> no, you're not going to give any names here. Yeah? <laughs> no, 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 I need to be in the show. <laughs> you know, so, mm-hmm, go ahead. Yeah, so I, I, I think and I hope the, the listeners would take this uh, in a very positive spirit. And let me add one more thing, uh, because I think we are now almost uh, running out of time. I think this is a new concept that's uh, coming up in the in, in, in ADR, what we're talking about. And I don't know whether this will be the right platform through Jockey and RISPA or your creative association, where I think you should keep a one day seminar or a half a day seminar where we can get experts to come and talk about ADR. So that, that a lot of questions in, in, I'm sure a lot of listeners right now, uh, must be saying now what is mediation and what if this goes wrong and what if arbitration. So I think if you can create a platform or a, or a half day seminar 
uh, and get good experts to come and talk about it. I think that will really uh, enhance the knowledge uh, and, and so that we are better placed to avoid future disputes in the most minimum manner. I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. Okay, this okay. Is, the echo is going. Okay, I love that to see in that. First of all, like somebody else, Christine made a comment here that ADR provides us the avenue actually for retaining good relationships. Absolutely. In court, somebody wins, somebody loses. So somebody yeah. walks away dancing and another one walks away crying or thinking, I will cut you another day, I'll revenge, you know? But ADR, whether it's arbitration, negotiation, or mediation, people actually shake hands. And how many cases have I had of real one, real cases in here in, in Nairobi, in Kenya, where even the, the, the parties say, I just wanted you to recognize that, to appreciate, to actually admit you are on the wrong. That's all I want you to do, you know? And then the case is so yeah. I think this obsession of going to court and like, I want to be one up, I want to win, I'll never work with that producer. And then we go to the social media court and people who have no idea about the details of the relationship are the ones who are even yelling loudest and abusing everybody and abusing every producer every, and they don't even know the details of the matter. We are one industry. We need to work well together. ADR is going to help us a great deal. But most important, knowing exactly what you want before you get that contract signed and making use of lawyers. That is a fabulous way actually to look at towards concluding this. I love the idea of the one day seminar, but why don't I go to RISPA for some summary comments, but maybe Rispa, before you do some summary comments, can we get every panelist to make one final statement? Um, actually, before they make the statements, uh, somebody has asked a question that I think, uh, June, you can help us understand. Um, Chris Kamau mm -hmm. asking about the Beijing Treaty. I know we ought to do it. The phone fell. The phone fell. I'm still here. <laughs> I thought I thought something. I'm sorry. Was I'm sorry. I think it was I was my phone, I, my phone got my phone got emotional. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I was asking about the Beijing Treaty. Uh, Chris is asking, uh, does the yes. doesn't the Beijing Treaty have some effect in terms of uh, protecting artists? And remember, as we talk about producers and directors and crew, there's also the actors who a lot of times, you know, like we learned a few weeks ago, Njoki where in the US they're getting royalties and all that. But here, how does the Beijing Treaty, how does it really apply on the ground? Okay. How does that help us um, on the ground? Okay, so, so very, that's okay. Very quickly, the Beijing Treaty was, uh, was ratified, signed in uh, 2012, and we ratified it here in Kenya as part of our uh, law, um, specifically within the, the Copyright Act, I believe it's section 30. So it gave rights to the uh, performers, the audiovisual performers, who are basically actors uh, predominantly. And the, the whole uh, movement was behind, behind the treaty was actors who are fairly prominent, very skilled, saying this movie would not have had the level of success or this TV show or whatever it is would not have had the level of success had it not been me because I've been acting, you know, if it's a Samuel L. Jones or whoever who says I'm the guy, uh, he should be able to have some element of negotiations. And it, it, it came about um, at a time when they felt the, the people who are benefiting from the, the cake after it was sold um, did not include that group of actors. And so what the Beijing Treaty provides is that there is a equitable remuneration, that's the word that's used, which is basically some fair compensation that acknowledges that you do not own any of the cake, but you, you, uh, your essence, your very essence and your very performance 
was um, such that it added and it contributed to the value of the cake. And therefore, you deserve some sort of compensation. So it's not a royalty for one who owns a share of the thing. It is, um, okay, we've been making money as the producer of the TV show, so we'll give you something. Now, it's important to clarify that the equitable remuneration is not payable by the producer. It is payable when the exploitation happens. So sitcom X gets aired, let's, let's use um, Antiboss, gets aired on TV station Y, and it's the TV station who has to pay this royalty for being able to broadcast this content. From that royalty, it's collected in Kenya by the Performance Rights Society of Kenya, PRISC, and so it's an encouragement for actors to consider joining Prisk and being part of the conversation there because the legal mandate to collect that equitable remuneration sits with Prisk and then negotiate how much of that comes back to the actors. So that's basically what uh, I believe Chris was referring to. And just to clarify, it is for the audio visual actors. The stage play guys have not yet have not yet uh, been included in that because of the very principle I've explained as to why it exists. Yeah. Wow, brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Thank you for that insight. Uh, so Njoki, you're saying uh, um, final remarks. Maybe we get a final remark from each one of them before we summarize way forward and because we always like to summarize this with a way forward an action from this. So Ricarion, would you like to make some final remarks on this? Um, I think all I'll say is, um, well, first and foremost, thank you, Joki Rispa. This was a conversation that um, I think everyone should have um, should have a listen to, and definitely a conversation I wish I had um, listened to back then when I was not in the industry. Uh, but we 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 live and we learn, we grow. Um, and I've learned so, so much. And ADR is something I'm going to write and print and put on my on my fridge to remind me every day to, to sign a better contract, you know. Um, uh, and also, I think it also taught me to be a better, you know, uh, businessman in, in, in quotes, to always find the balance between the art, the show, and the business. So thank you so much to the guests. Uh, thank you, Rispa and Joki, for the invite. And yeah, I look forward to maybe one day making my next film and discussing, having this very discussion with our producer about IP rights and show them that I know something. We'll be calling on you. We'll be calling you. I see. Give so, me some Thank you so much. Welcome, Likarian. We're with you, and like I've always told you, soon as I get some film, I will be. You'll be one of my pot of call. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, Asif, would you like to make for us some concluding remarks? Sure. Uh, one is I just want to congratulate Likarian for the work he's doing, uh, and as you know, we are doing the Kenya International Sports Film Festival, um, and I hope you'll allow me to talk a little bit on that, just to say that. One of the purpose was to develop uh, sports movies and sports documentaries of our unsung heroes of this country. Uh, we have a lot of good documentaries and uh, movies of sports stars of other countries. I think Kenya are equally good, if not better, than many of them. So it's an area that I think he needs to look at. Joki and Rispa are already looking at it. So we can have a side conversation on that to see how we can develop this further. Coming to um, ADR, just to let you know, now being in the uh, Kenya Film Commission, uh, the, the board is determined to take the film industry to a completely new level. Uh, I think the results are already showing. Uh, we have the budgets have increased. The communication between the, the office of KFC, uh, very well led by Timothy Owase, uh, is, is very receptive. We are very much interested to, to assist you, to facilitate you so that you take Kenya to a new level as far as the film industry is concerned and that, that Kenya becomes a major destination for film production. Uh, secondly, also on um, uh, ADR, you know, the government also has created uh, what is called the Nairobi Center for International Arbitration, NCIA. So all disputes that people have with the government bodies or organizations will be dealing with NCIA. 
So Kenya Film Commission is on board with NCIA. We are also doing internal mechanisms to uh, try and resolve any disputes that anybody has with the KFC. Uh, I'm in it, so we are developing a proper structure because we need to spend as little time as possible on dispute resolution. We need you as the creative people to be out there and to do wonders for this country because the sky is the limit as far as the creative market in this region is concerned. And finally to say ADR is here to remain. So if the earlier the people accept it, the earlier the people embrace it, the earlier the people support it, I think is going to do wonders for the entire industry. And finally, I want to thank uh, Jockey and Rispa and my uh, co-panelists for what was also a learning experience for me. I learned a little bit uh, from June, quite a bit, and I'm going to call on her on a few discussions that I would like. And I'm hoping that it will be a pro bono so that we don't have any disputes. <laughs> Uh, thank you and God bless you all. having a heart attack. Your concluding thank, comment. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, June, I wanted I didn't want to... sorry, June, before you do your final uh remarks, there's a question that has been addressed to you, and I, I want you to address it very briefly as you do your final remarks. Uh Simi okay. is asking, uh, what happens? Uh, as a producer, if you've invested a certain amount of money to make a film, you're yet to break even. So you 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 signed certain things with uh, the director or the writer. You're yet to break even at selling it, and there are people who expect to be paid. Uh, yet the film has not even broken even. Then what do you do? Yet you agreed on all these things. You know the writer uh, got informed, so they've signed yeah. with Simiu in their next film, and they're expecting their money. So how is Simiu protected as a producer? So I, I'm, I'm, I have a clarification for Simiu, and maybe I can uh, type his answer on the chat. But the, the first thing in my head is, are you talking about payments that you committed to making once you had made profit? Because um, I think a lot of the producers' obligation is also to say, I'm sinking in money, but there are actual expenses that need to be paid up front. A writer, for example, surely you cannot film if you don't have your script. So a, a writer for me is one of the first people you sort out because you don't have a story otherwise, right? Um, but if you're talking about people who are going to share in the profit, um, then, of course, your, your obligation is to tell them uh, the idea was to share with you once we have broken even. And I think that's, that's a very simple business conversation to have. But if you, are, if you haven't broken even, if you, if you say you haven't broken even, it tells me you had a budget and you spent some money. So I'm hoping some of that money was for the people who are in the process very early on and maybe the ones like your investors. Um, who want a, a percentage share of the profit, those ones you can obviously say, here are my books, be transparent about what you have made. And when as soon as you, 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 you've, you've met your broken even level, even if you make one shilling on top of that, then you start to pay out whatever you had committed to. So there's two components, but I, I, that's all I'll say for now, uh, Rispa, in the interest of time. Uh, but I'll, I'll have a look at the chat and if Simiu has uh, clarified, then I'll, I'll address that. Um, so my final comments is like my fellow panelists, thank you so much uh, for having me. Um, I'm a fan of these conversations because I've been having them for over 10 years with the creatives. I am one, Likaron hasn't told you, we acted together on the stage at Phoenix. So I tell him all the time, his success is purely due to me and my brilliance. So, <laughs> but Likaron is amazing. He's, <laughs> he's amazing. Um, and I love, I love the work that you do. Um, he knows I'm completely proud of him. So for me, I think the conversations are key and they're important. So thank you for hosting us and having this discussion. I wanted just to add two very brief things in terms of um, what people should go away with. Um, read up on, on your rights, uh, look for us intellectual property and entertainment lawyers so that we can guide you through the process. As we said, even if you come and have a conversation with us, it will cost you much less and it will give you uh, uh, some takeaways that you can go and have in your back pocket so that at least you can know what to do when you're next in a negotiation situation. Number two, think about the 
world as your market and the digital platform now because those are additional streams of revenue that have been brought to the fore. Back in the day, people would say, okay, it's a, it's a movie that I'm co-producing or producing with somebody else. Take this particular territory and let me keep this territory. It's, it's an option that you have. So if you put all the particular opportunities that there are for you on the table, then you can now literally cherry pick what you put in your fruit basket. And I think when we start to think about the film in its various components, as opposed to just one final thing, it opens up the doors to even more opportunity. Um, and just keep the conversations going. I agree with everything uh, Asif has said, and I agree with uh, your interventions, Joki and Rispa, and of course, Lekarion. The next movie is ready. Just just tell us what it is so we can, we can see how it can be made. And thank you everybody for your questions and your comments. Asante. Fantastic. Thank you so Very well put, Jin Gashui. Let me start first of all by, uh, you know, I always do this, the takeouts for me today and, you know, assuming maybe for everybody who's been watching. Obviously, we're very pleased that you guys made the time to be with us because in these sessions, we learn a lot. And what we are trying to do and what Njoki and I hoped to achieve when we started this is to share, to create an avenue and a platform where people get to ask questions that normally we wouldn't have the opportunity to ask. And a lot of things have come out, uh, you know, talking to experts here and we're learning a lot. And I'm hoping that everybody is taking these notes and going to practice them because at times I may not have the money or the resources to go to Jun Gashui's office to do this, but here she is literally giving you the tricks of the trade. So if you don't apply them, then you can't really blame anybody. So the key takeouts for me today, ADR, Asif, has talked about ADR, it's here to stay, it's not going anywhere when you're negotiating your contracts, make sure that, that your contract has that clause because what we saw, let me use last week as an example is, we all go to social media, we rant for two days, and to be honest, nothing gets resolved. Uh, you have issues, you go and abuse me on social media. We are really not reaching any resolution. Uh, as the producer, maybe I get upset and I decide, you know what, I'm never going to pick your calls again. You're then there also catching feelings for life. Nothing is resolved. <laughs> if there was anything in the contract, then we will call a SIF and we will say, can we, you know, like, sober people because we need to work with each other the industry is not so big so let's let's have more um you know sober conversations so that we are not losing out let's use avenues that are more uh, you know conducive and more productive for all of us and we can only do that if at the point of the contract we ensured that things like adr were included so that we have an opportunity to have these uh, conversations later uh second thing uh, that is a takeout for me today is lawyer up june is there she's been operating for 10 years and i'm happy to hear june saying that our business you know has she's seen more people seek out help you know right before they sign contracts but still a lot of us get contracts and we are lazy the minute you see therefore here in after which you know those terminologies <laughs> look it and we sign we just look at the money that's what most of us do. We look at the money, and if the money is what we agreed upon, we sign. There are so many other clauses. There are so many other nitty gritties, and I've seen it happen so many times. And you know, you worry too much about the money and the now, and then you don't think about the success later. So lawyer up so that your lawyer can do the donkey work for you. That's what they are trained to do. You don't need to understand those terminologies. They will break it down for you, and they're looking out for your interests. You just have to pay them. You know, and it's a small cost compared to what you stand to lose in future. Mm -hmm. uh, the third thing for me is think success now. When you're writing that story, when you're going to act in that project, when you're going to be a director in that project, in any kind of uh, discipline that you're in, in whatever project that you're working on, think of success now. Don't do it assuming that it's a failure right at the beginning, because also I think that also affects your, your mood and your creativity and how much you invest in it. Just think, think big, because you know, before you know, your your story is all over the world, like we've seen with Lekarion, and we really admire him, and we know the next big story is still coming. So think big, so that you can also have all these things in place. Because you're thinking big right at the beginning, then you will call June right at the beginning. 
And then um, I, I think the other thing was the most important thing is know your rights. Read about your rights. Whether you're a writer, whether you're a director, it doesn't matter what you do in that creative space. Know your rights. Uh, you know, there are different revenue streams. Know, you know, there are different territories. Read up on these things. You don't need to understand everything, but at least have the basic knowledge so that when you go to someone like June or Asif, you're giving them information for them to be able to help you. Those, I think, were the key takeouts for me today and probably for most people. Um, and, you know, as we conclude, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Asif. Thank you. We know you're, you have a crazy schedule with everything that is happening now with your work at Kenya Film Commission. We, 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 we are grateful for what you're doing behind the scenes for the industry. Thank you, Gashui, for always being there for, you know, supporting filmmakers and creatives in the business. Uh, you know, and I'm hoping more people will call up on you. And even we ourselves, Joki and I, will, you yeah. know, be to understand more because also as we listen to you, there's a lot we also need to learn. Yeah. Likarion. Yeah. Are you going to be Likarion. like Asif and ask for pro bono nini? That one, we will talk in what time. Come with me. You say come after, with me. After, after, after this broadcast, we will tell you on WhatsApp whether it's pro bono or not. <laughs> We will try and pay something. Yeah. <laughs> we understand what they had. Yeah. Likarion, thank you very much. Likarion, we, we truly admire you. I mean, what you did with Supermoto, first of all, as a film, as a creative, was something we hadn't seen in several years, and we're very proud of that. And I think that that legacy will carry on for a long time. It was a learning opportunity for you, and I think the more the key takeout from your experience is People write a lot of things. They don't know where your mind was at when you did what you did. You had an objective, uh, you did what you needed to do, and it is for us to admire. We, ca we can't focus on what happened or what could have been. It was your, what your intentions were. They were right, you learned a lot, and we know the next one is going to be bigger. And to be honest, we are looking to work with you, and we know you have great stories. So we really admire you, and thank you for making the time and for sharing your experience with us. Njoki, my partner in crime, Asante Sana, for always holding it down. Thank you for you know this opportunity for us to create a platform to tell these stories. Thank Guys, you. we have to bring this to an end. Time really flies. Next yeah. week, we'll be talking about licensing content licensing uh, and we'll expound on that so please uh, look out for us next week on on thursday at 5 p.m and for a recap of all this uh, broadcast you can go to our youtube page which is zeb prime tv on youtube and also on our facebook page we always upload this broadcast so that you can catch up on what you might have missed uh, our guests we ask you if anybody please has written a question to you or they get in touch please feel free to advise them of course with them Yes. uh as far as you can thank okay. you so much all and for the people that are watching us okay. you know with your yeah. questions and your support to yeah. and yeah. god bless yeah bye -bye. great comments actually from the audience they are all saying great discussion and when i say great lawyers like christina give i also say great panel discussion that makes me feel really very good and um lots of people have said lots of takeaway i also noticed my multi choice talent factory fraternity i have also made some comments thank you so much and um you must you must be on next time for the next conversation this has even extended an extra half an hour because of the gravity and we've only scrapped, scrapped the surface there's still a lot more for the audience we will give you the contacts of asif karim and jun gashui so that you can start contacting them for real professional assistance on things regarding your IP. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Good night. Bye bye. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you.